One of the advantages of online and blended learning is that you get to design and build all aspects of the learning environment. One of the biggest challenges of online and blended learning is that you have to purposely design all aspects of the learning environment and the learning processes you will take your learner through. By the completion of this course, you'll be able to effectively research, design, and build a unit or module of online learning and prototype your online learning project to key stakeholders. This broad course goal will be aligned through the following outcomes. One, explore important elements of online learning design, including quality, accessibility, and design guidelines. Two, Build a unit or module of online learning and prototype activity that implement an intentional strategy or learning approach. Three, participate in constructive review and feedback of design projects. And four, present and justify your design choices and pedagogical perspectives of the online design project. These outcomes will be realized through the following three authentic learning opportunities. Number one, the design phase. You'll research and select an online learning design approach, develop a design document and plan and create a video and supporting resources that outline your design, and then facilitate the moderation of feedback on your plan. Two, the implementation phase. You'll take your DACOM or your outcome map or three column table and create a unit or module of instruction based on that design. And once again, create a video and related resources that will be shared and from which you will receive and moderate feedback. And three, the usability phase. You will test your design and your unit or module of instruction by having your intended stakeholders, your curriculum committee or program colleagues, navigate through the overview section and engage in a short activity from the first module of your course. Now, depending on your circumstances, you can have your class peers engage in that usability testing. Throughout this course, you will engage in a significant amount of organization and sharing of your ideas. You'll also be involved in sharing and receiving feedback and the continual improvement of your design and implementation. We won't ask you to do something we won't do ourselves. Over the years, we have found that the sooner and more often we can solicit feedback on our instructional design and implementation of prototypes and testing, the more effective our courses will become. I can share a three-column table with one of my co-developers, and in a matter of minutes, they can confirm my alignment of outcomes, activities, and assessment, or tell me what I may have overlooked or what I may need to take out. Similarly, when I walk one of my co-developers or colleagues through one of my units or modules of instruction, they can very quickly provide the necessary feedback I need to make adjustments to the learning environment. By the time my course goes live, the design and the implementation of my learning environment has been reviewed and improved multiple times. This is often the process that you will go through if you are fortunate enough to be at an institution that has a center for teaching and learning that offers this type of support. It is our hope that you will see that you can engage in this type of development process outside of a Center for Teaching and Learning by simply asking your peers and colleagues to provide that second, third, or fourth set of eyes you need to review your learning environment. You don't have to do course design and development alone. And as you learn to give others feed forward and support, you will in turn learn how to receive that feed forward. This is one of the instances where that old cliché, many hands make light work, has some merit. I would suggest that the cliché be modified too, many hands and eyes make for better courses.